Now this is the second episode in my two-part series about homeschooling multiple grades. In the last episode, we looked at some tips for saving your sanity while homeschooling multiple grades. In this episode, we're gonna focus on methods for managing multiple grades. So this is the practical application part to this podcast series. Before we jump into this podcast, I do want to let you know that the show notes for this episode can be found at janelleknutson.com forward slash podcast. For those of you who don't know me very well, I just finished up my 17th year of homeschooling and I have seven kids, so I'm very familiar with trying to homeschool multiple grades at one time. Now, if you were to ask me, oh, about 10 years ago or so, how to homeschool lots of kids, I would have confidently told you that there was one method that had worked for us and that I was sure it was going to work for you too. However, the Lord in his kindness humbled me and he showed me that one method can't possibly work for every homeschool family in every season. God, well, he kind of pulled my tried and true method right out from under me. It was really a humbling experience as I scrambled to find other methods to homeschool all of my kids without losing my mind. So what I want to share with you in this episode are different methods or ideas for homeschooling multiple grades. Some of these methods I have used myself. Some of them are ones that have worked great for my friends who also have multiple children to homeschool. But remember that each of us has a unique family. So what works for me may not work for you. And a method that works for you in one season of homeschooling might not work for you in a different season of homeschooling. So hopefully the methods that I'm going to share with you will, at the very least, be a springboard to get you thinking about what might work for your unique family. The first method for managing multiple grades is group learning. Group learning is really just where you bring your kids together so that you can teach them all together as a group. So if, for example, history is a great subject for group learning, you can read a history lesson to all of your children, and after you teach the lesson, you send them off to do work at their own individual level. So perhaps your kindergartner colors a corresponding coloring sheet while you're reading the history lesson, and then your second grader may need to write two facts that she learned from the lesson, and then maybe illustrate her facts. Maybe your fifth grader has to write a paragraph summarizing the history lesson, and your seventh grader has to do additional research on what you taught. But you are only having to teach one history lesson because all your kids are learning at the same time. So this really helps with managing all those multiple grades. So what are some subjects that work well with group learning? Well, history, science, Bible, and literature are great to do together as a family. I actually have a few blog posts that go into more detail on multi-age learning that I will link to in the show notes if you wanna go check that out. A good tip for group learning is to let the younger ones leave the lesson early. So for example, science in the beginning is a science curriculum that works really well with multiple grades, usually about preschool through sixth or seventh grade. And one year I used it with a preschooler, a first grader, a third grader, and a fifth grader. So my preschooler would come and sit in on the experiments that were done first, and then he'd go off and play. The next, I would read the lesson to all my school age kids. And then after I read the lesson, my first grader would move on to something else. But my fifth and third grader would stay with me so that we could discuss the lesson and do some of the questions and the different activities. So as you can see, I'm letting the younger ones leave the lesson early because they're just not gonna have the attention span to make it through to the end, nor are they going to need all of that additional uh, work at the end. And so just letting each child get the information that they need at their level and then letting those little ones off Um, early as you move through the lesson. This was really a fun time for all of us when we did Science in the Beginning together because we learned a lot, we had a lot of fun, but more importantly, we had a lot of shared memories. And I only had to teach science one time to all of my kids, so it really was a win-win for all of us. Some homeschool curriculum is intentionally designed to be used together with multiple grades, and other curriculum is grade specific, but you can definitely adapt it to use with several grades. So let me share a few homeschool curriculums that were actually created with group learning in mind. I will also have all of these linked in the show notes as well. 
The first one is My Father's World. It's a wonderful curriculum to do as a family. It covers all of the subjects and your kids are doing almost all of these subjects together. So it's very open and go um, with minimal preparation for you as the mom. So it's really easy to implement with several kids. Another option is the Mystery of History. This is a history curriculum and it was designed for group learning. I have a post on how I use the Mystery of History with multiple ages on my blog. And again, I will link that in the show notes. Another great option is Tapestry of Grace. This is a classical Christian curriculum that uses Charlotte Mason methods. It was created by a homeschool mom who had multi-age learning in mind. And so this was one I used, I've used in the past and I really liked Tapestry of Grace. Science in the Beginning, which I already mentioned, and Apologia's Elementary Science Curriculum are both excellent science curriculums that work really well with group learning. And I really could go on and on. A lot of homeschool curriculums are designed for group learning now. And so um, again, make sure to check the show notes for links to more of them. So I do have to tell you that group learning is the method that I would have told you about 10 plus years ago. It's the method that I thought this is a tried and true method. It's going to work for everybody. This is the way that you homeschool multiple grades. And really, it was the method that other large family homeschool moms had shared with me. And I thought if it worked for them, if it's working for me, surely it's going to work for everybody. But here's what I found out. It doesn't work for every family and it doesn't work for every season of homeschooling. The first challenge I discovered with this method was with the large age gap I had between my oldest child and my next batch of kids. So it was really hard to teach my high schooler at the level she needed while also teaching a group of elementary age kids. So at this point, I really had to break off our group learning into two groups. So I often bunch my middle school and high school students together and then have a second group of elementary age kids. Now, if you have just two kids and one is a lot older than the other one, this might not be the best method for you. Of course, it might work maybe for your Bible time, um, maybe for a few subjects, but it's probably not going to work for all of your subjects just because of that huge age gap. Another challenge that I encountered was when my very active, very loud and fidgety boys entered into our group learning. Now, yes, this was a good opportunity to teach my boys the art of sitting still and being quiet, but they just couldn't do that for long periods of time. Honestly, it was an even better opportunity for me to learn that many kids learn best when their hands and bodies are busy doing something. And so I realized that my boys listen better when they're building Legos or playing with Play-Doh. They do their schoolwork better when they're able to bounce on a ball or have to balance on a ball or when they're coloring. And it, it really just became increasingly more difficult to do all of our subjects together. I had to kind of put aside group learning and really just stick to maybe learning with our Bible time and maybe one other subject. And we had to divide up for the rest of the subjects just because my mostly girls needed to have really quiet and calm to learn. And so even though their brothers might be quiet, watching them bounce on a ball or build something was really distracting to them. And so I just, I realized this method is not going to work well for us in this season of homeschooling. Now, we have added group learning back in over the years, and with that, we have encountered one other challenge, and that is having kids who are eager and ready to start the school day way before their siblings are. And so what I have found is that balancing some group learning with some independent learning has resolved this issue for us because my kids who are really eager to start the homeschool day off can start off with independent um, work, and then when their siblings are ready to start the school day, we can then move into some group learning. Now that brings me to another method for managing multiple grades, which is independent learning. And that just means that the curriculum you are using allows your child to learn on their own with little to no instruction or help from you. And these types of curriculum are designed so that the child can learn everything they need to know from the lessons provided, either in a book or from video or from a computer-based program. So there's a lot of different curriculum choices for families who want their children to work more independently. There's BJU Press Distance Learning, there's a Becca Academy video, teaching textbooks, switched on schoolhouse, monarch, life pack workbooks. I mean, those are just a few of the many examples of curriculum that really was created for more independent learning. 
Now you will need to put some systems in place so that your kids can work independently. If you want them to work independently, they need to know what they're supposed to be doing on any given day. So checklists and daily planners are a great way to help your independent learners stay on track. I actually have some resources in my shop for you that you might wanna check out that can help you in planning and helping your kids stay on track. Now for younger learners, you might wanna check out the Workbox system. It's a great way to help younger kids work more independently, and I will link to more information about how the Workbox system works in the show notes. A third method for homeschooling multiple grades is having a split homeschool day. Now I know what you're thinking, what on earth is a split homeschool day? Well, if you have a lot of kids and some of them are older and some of them are younger, then you can split your homeschool into two times. You'll teach the younger kids in the morning and the older kids in the afternoon. Now, this is best if all your children are school age kids. If you've got little ones that are preschool and under, this probably isn't going to work well for you because this method means that you're doing homeschool all day long and you're investing in your elementary kids in the morning, you're investing in your teens in the afternoon, and that doesn't really leave you time to love on your little ones. Now, I heard of a mom who followed this method of a split homeschool day and it really worked well for her, but the key was that she didn't have any little little ones underfoot anymore. All of her children were school age. Now, a downside to this method, if you haven't figured it out already, is that mom is helping with school all day long. This is not a method that I have wanted to try, but there are seasons where you just have to do what you need to do to be able to homeschool all of your children. And so this might be something that you just need to do for a season, maybe even just for a few months so that you can actually homeschool all of your kids. So I just wanted to throw it out there because, again, it might be the best option for your family right now, and I want to give you as many options as possible. Another method for managing multiple grades is to share the knowledge. The idea here is that you would teach something to an older child and then have them share that knowledge with their younger siblings. So maybe you spend time teaching your junior high child her science lesson, and then you tell her that one of her assignments that's due at the end of the week is to put together some kind of presentation to share with her younger siblings, and maybe to include one experiment or one hands-on activity for the younger ones to do. Now, it's really important to note here that our older children are not parents. So our older kids are not responsible for educating their siblings. That is our job as a parent, to make sure that each of our children is learning and growing. But it is okay to delegate a little bit, especially if we have an older sibling who loves teaching and loves being with younger kids. They may really enjoy this assignment of teaching a younger sibling or two or three. Older kids are often asked to put together presentations and present them to their peers, so why not have them present it to their younger siblings instead? Now, use this method with care and consideration. The last thing that you want to do is to cause sibling disunity and cause your older child to resent her younger sibling. So again, I just encourage you to prayerfully consider this option. It works really great with kids who are wanting to maybe be a teacher when they grow up with children, older children who love interacting with little kids and love teaching, this would be a great thing to have them do. But if you have a child who doesn't like teaching, doesn't really like um, teaching younger children, then this would be one that you want to avoid. Because again, we do not want to cause sibling disunity and cause conflict between our kids. A fifth method would be to follow a loop schedule. So if you have not heard of a loop schedule before, I'm going to try to do my best to explain it. It's one of those methods that you really need to see laid out on a piece of paper, but here's a general idea of how it works. You would make a list of subjects that you don't have to teach every single day, but that you wanna make sure you get in on a regular basis. So maybe things like history and science and art would fit into this category. You're gonna write them out in a list and work through that list. So maybe your list says history, science, read aloud, and art. So on Monday, you spend time on history and maybe that's all you get to on your loop schedule. Then on Tuesday, you look at your loop schedule and you move to the next thing, which is science. You're able to get through science in a short amount of time and you still have time left, so you tackle the next thing on your list, which is read alouds. 
Then on Wednesday, you do art and loop back around to getting some history in. But you don't finish all of the history lesson, so you finish that up on Thursday and then move on to science. Now, it's important to note that you'll also tackle subjects like math and spelling that need to be done every single day. You're going to tackle those every single day, but the loop schedule is for those subjects that maybe you don't need to do every day, but you want to make sure that you cover. So what you're doing is slowly looping through all of these subjects so that you will eventually cover everything. I think this method really helps us as moms because we don't really feel like we're falling behind. We know that we're tackling what we can on any given day and that we'll loop back around to everything eventually. Now you can have several different loop schedules going at the same time. For example, Maybe you want to have a loop schedule for Bible where you read a Bible story one day, you work on scripture memorization another day, and you discuss basic Christian doctrine on another day. Then you also have a loop schedule for core subjects like history, science, and literature. You can also assign one loop schedule for the morning and one for the afternoon. So maybe you have a morning loop schedule for Bible. Then when you finished that, you move on to doing the subjects that have to be done every single day, like math and spelling. But then you have an afternoon loop schedule for the other core subjects like history, science, and literature that you're going to loop through in the afternoon. So there are many ways to use a loop schedule, and it actually works great for managing our household chores as well. Now, a sixth method for managing multiple grades is using video-based and online programs. Now, I have to say that when I started homeschooling, I said to myself, I will never, ever ever put my kids in front of a screen to do school. I will never let somebody else teach them. This is my responsibility. I will never use an online program. I'm the teacher. I'm the mom. I'm going to teach them. Well, like I said earlier, the Lord has a way of humbling me. And when I say never, he says, oh yes, it's going to happen. So after 10 years of homeschooling, I was so burnt out that I needed help. I just didn't see how I could continue homeschooling. But the Lord in his sovereignty pointed me back to our homeschool vision statement. And I shared about that in our first uh, podcast episode in this series. And so I encourage you to go back and check that out. But I asked myself, could we accomplish those things well that were in our vision statement? Could we accomplish them well if our children were not with us? And over time, God showed me that I had made a certain method of home education an idol. I had said, this is the way I'm going to homeschool. This is the way I'm going to get things done. This is the way a perfect homeschool works. And I'm not going to do anything else. And God had to really humble me and show me that I had made these methods an idol. He was calling me to homeschool my children, but I was so wrapped up in homeschooling a certain way that I had become too exhausted to even invest in the hearts of my children, let alone their minds. And so I had to lay down my homeschool method and this curriculum idol that I had built up, and I had to surrender what our homeschool would look like to the Lord. And he led me to video-based learning. Now, can I tell you that I cried when I ordered those first video-based courses? I felt like I was a failure as a homeschool mom. But I did it because it was our only option if we wanted to continue homeschooling all of our kids while still having a happy, insane mom at home. And you know what? An amazing thing happened. As we started those video-based courses, my kids were happy to be working independently, and they were excited to share their new knowledge with the rest of the family at lunch and at dinner. And I now had the time to play with my little ones and still help my older kids when questions came up. And most importantly, I had the energy to invest in the hearts of my children instead of being so burnt out that I couldn't even fathom entering into a deep conversation with them about what they were struggling with. I realized that we were homeschooling primarily for discipleship, but no discipleship had been happening when I was weary from homeschooling all of my kids on my own, in my own strength. Video-based and online programs lifted a load off of my shoulders and gave me back the time and the energy that I needed to love my kids well while still giving them a good education at home. Now, I'm not saying video-based and online programs are the best thing for everyone, but if you're in a situation where you are burnt out and ready to give up on homeschooling, then this might be an option for you to consider. 
And the great thing is that you don't have to use this method for every subject. You can have a video-based math course for each of your kids while still doing history together as a family. Maybe you teach science to one child while the other one uses either an independent learning-based curriculum or a video-based curriculum for science. So just think about, is there one subject that really overwhelms you to teach? Maybe adding in a video-based or online program is just the thing that you need to be able to homeschool all of your kids well. Now, our family's favorite video-based curriculum is the BJU Press Distance Learning Program, and I have a lot of reviews on my blog and my YouTube channel on why we love BJU Press Distance Learning, how it works, and some different reviews on some of the different courses that they offer, so I will leave those linked in the show notes. But there's a lot of other great options for video-based curriculum as well. There's Abeka Academy, Veritas Press Online, and Veritas Press Self-Paced Courses, Master Books, has some video lessons now, and so does Apologia. Even HSLDA has an academy now, so there is a lot of options when it comes to video-based learning. You may also want to consider dual enrollment classes for your high school student. Um, I have a great list of online and video-based curriculum options on my blog, so I will make sure to include that in the show notes as well. Another method for managing multiple grades is co-ops and classes. Co-ops and classes can be a fun opportunity for your kids. They can take a load off of your shoulders, but, and I, I really want to make this clear, for some of us moms, it can add more stress to our lives. So you do not want to join a co-op or a class if it's gonna add more to your already taxing schedule. You wanna make sure that the co-op or class is helping relieve some of the homeschool stress instead of adding more stress. So maybe you're struggling to implement literature in your home and you can't find the time or the quiet space to have a literature discussion with your teen, but there's this really great co-op class where your teen's gonna be reading books with other teens and discussing them together. That might be a really great option for your family. But if you already have a great history curriculum that you're able to use with all of your children at the same time and it's working really well for your family, but then you hear about this history class at a co-op and you're wondering if maybe you should just do that instead, maybe that wouldn't be a great idea if you already have something that's working really well for your family. So if you're still trying to decide if a homeschool co-op is right for your family, go check out my blog post entitled how to decide if a co-op is for you, and I will make sure to link that down in the show notes. That will help you kind of think through some of the different things about the pros and cons of co-ops. The last method I have to share with you today is getting outside help. Now, when we decided to homeschool, it did not mean that we were committing to doing everything all by ourselves. I think the tendency for me, at least when I started homeschooling, was to say, Okay, I'm homeschooling, I'm taking this on, I'm educating my kid. In addition to keeping my house clean, in addition to keeping meals on the table, in addition to fulfilling all my outside commitments and focusing on my marriage and keeping that healthy, but honestly, I couldn't do it all. And I'm guessing if you're honest with yourself, you're not able to do it all either. If you are homeschooling, especially homeschooling multiple grades, you're gonna either need to get some outside help or you're gonna need to let some things go. Something that I have found helpful is to ask friends and family members, or even older members in our church that are retired for help with homeschooling. So many people, especially older adults, would be happy to share about a subject or a skill that they love and enjoy. So just ask them, say, hey, would you come once a month and teach us something about World War II or engineering or astronomy or cooking? If someone loves a particular topic or skill, they're usually pretty eager to share that love with others, especially with kids. So look for outside help when it comes to homeschooling. Other people can help teach our kids and pour into their lives. It does not mean we're failing as homeschool moms. Another option is to hire a tutor, especially for older kids who are taking subjects that maybe you struggled in uh, when you were a child. Or if you have a child who is facing some learning challenges, you know, hiring a tutor might just be what you need to be able to educate your kids at home successfully. Now, as moms, we need to acknowledge our limitations. God put us in human bodies. We need to rest. We need to have sleep. We cannot burn the midnight oil day after day after day doing lesson plans and trying to get things ready and keeping our house clean. 
We have to acknowledge our limitations. So ask for help and then please know that it's okay to let some things go. This is not the season for a perfectly clean house. This is not a season for four course meals at dinner every night. This is not the season that the laundry gets folded and put away at the end of every single day. There are so many more important things for us to do, like investing in the hearts of our children, not just their academics, but investing in their hearts. So know that you can't do everything. Do the best with the time and the resources that God has given you. And then rest, knowing that God, who called you to this task of homeschooling, will supply you with what you need each day to homeschool all of your kids. But here's the thing. He'll supply you with what you need, not necessarily what you want. Sometimes that means laying down what we want our homeschool to look like and choosing a method that we can actually implement in our home. I hope these methods for homeschooling multiple grades were helpful to you. If so, would you consider sharing this podcast with your friends and family? And I'd so appreciate it if you'd leave a review as well. Thank you so much for listening.